we'll talk about metabolic syndrome specifically right now. So metabolic syndrome is sort of the scourge of our society at the moment. That always, or not always, generally leads to diabetes. Um, I think something like, oh my goodness, let me remember this percentage right. I want to say something like 80 to 90% of Americans are close to having metabolic syndrome, or at least a couple of the five things that you can't have uh, or that are metabolic syndrome. It's some ridiculously high percentage of Americans are falling into this category. Okay. So it's a thrombogenic state of being. What does that mean? That you're so inflamed that you're going to be forming clots left and right in your body. Abdominal obesity, that's your waist circumference, arterial hypertension, insulin resistance, dyslipidemia, so high triglycerides, altered total cholesterol to HDL ratio, too much LDL, too much oxidized LDL, and cardiovascular disease. This is sort of the metabolic syndrome world. It used to be thought that adipose was just, oh, it's just a harmless little area where we store energy, no big deal. You can still be healthy and have a ton of adipose, that's okay. Well, but now we know it's actually an endocrine organ it's a neuroendocrine organ. It's very biologically active. And too much adipose is extremely detrimental to your health. Uh, it's a secretory organ, meaning it's secreting cytokines all the time. And it is a potent source of hormones, peptides, and cytokines, which are the little proteins that induce inflammation and damage to tissue. Adipose is there for a purpose. A certain amount of adipose is needed. It cushions you. It cushions the organs, cushions the nervous system, and it does provide um, a stored efficient form of energy for when you're not eating, right? So that you can have fuel to keep going. The problem is when you never use the adipose and you keep adding on more and more adipose, okay? It's supposed to be stored, used, stored, used, stored, used. Most of us are just storing, 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 okay? It regulates your food intake, your glucose, and your lipid metabolism. It's a source of inflammation. It's a source of your coagula coagulation factors in terms of communication or like inducing the thrombogenic state of being. And then the, uh, the cytokines that they produce are called adipokines, obviously. Uh, Pro-inflammatory, mostly. There are a few that are not inflammatory and actually healthy, but we only see those levels up if you have a normal amount of fat. If you have an excess energy state, you're producing bad guys, adipokines. I tell my patients all the time, look, your knees don't hurt and your feet don't hurt just because you have excess load, just because you're heavy. They hurt because your fat cells are producing inflammation and attacking yourself 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Like, what, of course you hurt. Um, if, if a normal sized person put on a weight vest, they would not hurt the same way somebody carrying around excess energy in the form of stored fat hurt because the weight vest isn't producing inflammation, but the adipose is, and that's the problem. Next. Oh, adipose is fat. So adipose is a technical name for the fat cell. And there's white adipose, brown adipose. Brown adipose is um, good fat. It's uh, thermogenic and it's actually healthy for you. Uh, think about this, like, you know how when you go to the pool or the beach um, and the water is really, really cold and your kids never seem to notice or mind, all of their fat is mostly brown fat. And so they're constantly, it's metabolically active. They're producing energy from it and producing heat. As we get older, we have less and less of that good stuff and we have more and more of this storage fat that is damaging us, okay? So adipose is the medical term for fat cells. Next. Hmm? Is that a question? Can you say it again? Oh, yeah, adipose. Think of adipose. It's not just a storage depot. It's not just holding calories for you. Adipose is actually... Be, it becomes an organ in and of itself. It is sending out hormones. It is sending out proteins. It is sending out neurologic signals. So when you have too much of it, the system, our system is not set up for that. And it starts to become extremely damaging. Okay. So, well, what does fat make that's so bad? You might ask to yourself. Well, tumor necrosis factor alpha, IL-1 beta, interleukin-6, interleukin-8, transforming growth factor beta, plasminogen activator inhibitor, haptoglobulin, leptin, serum amyloid A, all this stuff is terrible, damaging. It's inducing inflammation and chronic inflammation, turning on genes you don't want turned on, turning off genes you don't want turned off. 
okay? Because you're in an excess energy state that the body was not ever meant to be in. Adiponectin is a good guy. So it normal or normal BMI people, I guess, or people with a healthy amount of fat that's supposed to be there, again, to cushion the organs, cushion the nerves, make things move smoothly. You have to have fat. Don't get me wrong. I don't want anybody to think that. You just can't have too much of it. That's not healthy. Um, adiponectin is highly anti-inflammatory, believe it or not. If you have a low adiponectin, that is strongly correlated with having a high CRP. Maybe your doctor's checking your CRP. Maybe they're not. They should be. Really, they should be checking your high sensitivity CRP. CRP is C-reactive protein. It is produced in the liver um, when you're in an inflamed state. And it is now known to be a very predictive marker of future cardiovascular events. So if you have a high sensitivity CRP that's not normal, uh, you got to get that under control quickly or you're going to have an MI or some sort of issue like a stroke or something in the future. Um, it's, it's pretty predictive. <clears throat> so your adipose tissue is going to increase all the guys on the left, which are going to go to your non-communicable chronic disease states. So adipokines, remember these are cytokines produced by adipose cells. So the little um, messenger proteins that induce changes, induce inflammation, induce transformational change at the genetic level, but produced by fat cells, so adipokines. Um, highly inflamed, metabolically dysfunctional adipose, think of it that way. It's filled with macrophages. Remember I told you about the macrophages, good guys, bad guys? So these macrophages come into the new organ you've developed, the adipose organ. They infiltrate and then they just sit there and they get into that chronic state where they never become pro-healing. And they're producing these cytokines and chemokines or chemical messengers that, the, that sort of become a, a harbinger of badness or like just prophesying doom in your body. So the, the adipose tissues, just like they go into plaques in the arteries, when the macrophages go in and form foam cells, that's when things are really bad, oxidized LDL, et cetera. So you get these adipo, uh, adipokines coming out from the fat cells, a lot of times from dead fat cells that never get cleaned up and sent away because they're just sort of like encapsulated in this new organ you've created with these macrophages that are always turned on for bad inflammation. So basically, over time, we have learned that the state of being where you have too much excess energy or you're obese is causally linked to the chronic low-grade inflammatory state, which is causally linked to the chronic non-communicable diseases. So it is important to get this excess energy state under control. And there's massive amounts of studying being done on this right now. <clears throat> 